God bless you. Good to be here tonight again. It's a Bible study, Sabadine Church. My brother Craig Lindsay is going to be bringing the word. Let's just pray. Amen. And God will bless us and God will use your brother last night. Father God, we thank you, O Lord God, we can be found in your presence, O Lord. Lord, we thank you, O Lord God, for your precious word that it is a lamp unto our feet and a guide for our path. Lord, I ask that you would use my brother this night, Lord, as a vessel for you. Lord, that the words that will come out, Lord God, out of his mouth, my God, will be a blessing to the hearer, O God. Lord, that we change lives, my God. Lord, it will be restored, O Lord, strengthened and encouraged, O Lord, through your precious word, O Lord. Lord, we give you the praise and we give you the honour and the glory, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Come, let us sing. Come, let us sing. Come with praise and adoration to our King. Come, let us sing. Through them. You know, the Bible talks about it. You know, Jesus said in John 
16 and 33, that in this world you will have troubles. No, in, in this world it's natural to have violent times, test and time, trouble time, persecution for the Christian, all these different things. You know, it, it's natural for to, to go through hard times. You know, the Bible talks about it. Jesus said, in this world you will have trouble. You know, so I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, as a Christian, Lord, where do we draw strength from? You know, at the time of need, you know, at that time when we're being maybe persecuted for our faith, maybe at the time when we're, we're just struggling, maybe we're burdened with sin to this world, and we're just trying to press on. I said, Lord, where do we get the strength from that we need to persevere, to press on in our faith? And you know, the Lord showed me something in the book of Acts. If you turn with me to the book of Acts, chapter 27, and you know, the Lord showed me a character of a mighty man in the Bible, the great Apostle Paul, a man of faith. And you know, we're going to read it in Acts 27 and verse 22 to 25. It says, And now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For there stood by me this night an angel of God whom I belong to, whom I serve, saying, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you all those who sail with you. Therefore, take heart, men, for I believe God that it will be, just as it was told to me. You know, there's a big overview to this story, and we've not got time to go into it tonight. <clears throat> but to let you know what's going on in the background and what's happened. You know, Paul has been falsely accused. You know, Paul at this time, if we read about the story, Paul is under the heavy guard from a, a Roman centurion, Julius. And you know, Paul has, has been taken and he's been delivered by this man, Julius. He's been taken. Julius' job was to take him and deliver him to Rome before Caesar. And you know, Paul had many miles to cover by sea to get to this place. And you know, if we read on in the story, you know, Paul said that the time of year was the end of the fast, you know, October, November. And you know, at this time, the, the stormy weather was coming. You know, people at this time wouldn't go out on the sea because it was almost impossible or almost unpredictable for the storms to arise out of nothing. And you know, we'll see that how Paul, when they landed at this place called Phoenix, you know, Paul, uh, Fairhaven, Paul encouraged them to winter down there. He encouraged them to stay because he knew. And the Bible says, I perceive, Paul said, from past experience, that meaning that he perceived that there were storms coming. And you know, against the Lord, against listening to the godly man's advice, against listening to Paul, we see that Julius and the captain of the ship there places the gold, places the beef. You know, Julius, if he didn't deliver Paul to Rome, if he didn't manage to deliver Paul to Rome, and for somehow Paul escaped, you know, it would have been Julius' life for Paul. You know, so Julius wanted to take him to Rome. He wanted to get them there by any means. You know, the, the ship that they were on, the Alexandrian ship, a cargo ship, you know, they were heading to Rome. And you know, if they only got there, you know, and delivered the cargo, they would find favour in the sight of Rome the sight of Caesar. So you know, against Paul's advice, the Bible says that they wept anyway. The Bible says that there was a, a quiet with a wind at their back, the way that they, they, they wanted it to be. But they pulled out, the Bible says, I'm paraphrasing, and not long far into their travels, the Bible says that a tempest arose. Now you know, I want to tell you that when we look at the sea, when we look at the sea and the sailing in the sea, I want to tell you that's a picture of the world. For you and for me. As Christians, I want to tell you, sometimes life can be plain sailing. But then sometimes out of nowhere, we see that great tempests arise, great storms arise. And you know, you might ask, what is this to do with strength and, and how about how do we keep our strength and our faith through the storms of life? You know, we're going to look at the character of Paul. You know, the Bible says that they were caught in this, this storm. The Bible says they were in it for 14 days and 14 nights. The Bible says that they were in the middle of the storm. The Bible says that great a tempest. You know, the people around Paul, there was 276 people on his boat. The people around Paul.
people started to fear, started to panic. You know, they tried everything. They tried tying the boat together to stop it from breaking up. They tried taking the implements of the boat and throwing them overboard. You know, they tried taking the precious cargo that they had on board. They tried throwing it over. You know, the Bible says in verse 20, in the midst of the storm, where the fear and the panic grabbed the heart, you know, the Bible says that, if, that all hope of being saved had now been lost. But you know, we see Paul, the mature man of God. We see Paul showing his faith, showing the strength of his faith during the hard times of life. And you know, this is where it takes us into this scripture that we've just read. You know, Paul says, And now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, <coughs> but only of the ship. Now, you know, I want to tell you something. Fear is something that spreads. Panic is something that spreads. You know, if, if I was to run into your home with fear in my, my, my heart and show you that I had fear, you know, it's an automatic reaction to have fear and to have panic. But, you know, when Paul's in the middle of the storm, in the same storm, in the same ship, the Bible says when everybody else is having fear and panic, here is Paul encouraging them. He says, take heart. Where does Paul draw this strength from? Where does Paul draw this courage from? Paul says, take heart, for there will be no loss of life, but only of the ship. I tell you where Paul draw his strength from. The Bible says in verse 24, saying, do not be afraid, Paul. Do not, in verse 23, for stood me by me this night, an angel of God, to whom I belong, to whom I am served, saying, do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar, and indeed God had granted you those, all those who sailed with you. You know, right in the time of need, you know, Paul was a man that always kept his trust in the Lord. Paul was a man who kept focused on the Lord. But Paul was a man in the time of need that God sent an angel with a word of encouragement to Paul. We wonder where Paul got his strength from. Paul had an angel with a word of encouragement. You know, the Bible says at the time of need, God sent a message of encouragement to Paul. You know, you might be here today and you say, well, how does that encourage me? You might say, well, I've never seen an angel come to me with a word of encouragement. You know, I want to tell you, my brother and sister, we have the word of encouragement. We have the word of God that's filled with the promises of the God. You know, when we're in the middle of the storm, you know, when we're in the middle of that hard time, when we're burdened, when we feel like we cannot press on anymore, we have the word of God filled with the promises of God. The Bible said, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. You know, the Bible who said that we serve the Almighty God who sees all, who knows all, who hears all. You know, the disciples in the boat, when they were in the middle of the storm, Jesus said, let us go in the boat. You know, Jesus is in the boat with you. Jesus is in the boat with me. And you know, this is where we draw our strength from. You know, Paul said this here in verse 25. He said, therefore, take heart. Take heart. Take courage, man. Take heart. For I believe God that it will, will be just as it was told to me. Where did Paul draw his strength from? Paul draw his strength from hearing the word of God and believing the word of God just as it was told to him. You know, I want to tell you, for you and for me, we must be like Paul. We must pick up the word of God. You know, in that minister of the hard time, we must pick up the word of God. We must read the word of God. We must hold fast to the word of God. Not just hear the word of God, but believe in the word of God. Trust in the word of God. And that's where our strength comes from. That's where our faith comes from. You know, the Bible says that in the midst of the storm, that when they were all praying out, the Bible says that they set their anchors out further down in the scripture. They set their anchors out and they prayed for daylight to come. The Bible says just before daylight come, that Paul took bread and he broke bread. He implored them to eat. He urged them to eat. He told them that this would be good for their strength. I want to tell you, for you and for me, food may give us physical strength. But I want to tell you, in the midst of the storm, in the middle of the hard time, when you're burdened and you're weak, I want to tell you, it's the word of God that gives us that spiritual strength to keep going. You know, my brother and sister, I want to tell you, we're in this boat together. And I want to tell you, we're all facing a storm right now. We're all facing a hard time. 
But I want to tell you, it's the word of God that's going to give us the strength to carry on. You know, maybe you're in this, this storm and maybe you're like, oh, maybe you have faith in the Lord. Maybe you have trust in the Lord. Maybe you're your faith is strong in the Lord. Well, I want to tell you, like Paul, we have to impart it to others. You know, fear spreads, I want to tell you, but so does faith. You know, when a man of God who trusts in God stands up and encourages one another, he can encourage that brother. He can strengthen that brother. He can encourage that brother to take from the Lord, to be strengthened, to remind them that our anchors are in Christ and that that anchor holds and that we should continue praying until daylight comes. You know, maybe, maybe you're that person. I would encourage you, I would encourage you to encourage the others around you. You know, maybe you're listening to this tape and maybe you're saying to yourself, I'm just not called. You know, I wish I was strong in my faith. I wish I was strong in my faith, but I'm just not called. And you know, I'm in the middle of a storm. I'm in the middle of a hard time. I'm burdened and I'm pressed and I'm just not called. I don't have that kind of faith. How do I get that faith? You know, 10, 12 years before this letter, you know, we read about Paul when he sent a letter to the church of Crete. You know, he said, I do not want you to be ignorant. I want to remind you about the trouble that I had in my narration. You know, Paul talked about the time when he was persecution, when he was under great trial, under great pressure. The Bible says that Paul said, he says, I do not want you to be ignorant. I do not want you not to know. He said, I want you to understand about the, the tr trouble that I have nation. That I was burdened beyond measure, beyond strength, even though that I despaired of all life. You know what that word despair means? He says, I gave up all hope. You know, but in verse 9, in that scripture, 2 Corinthians 1 and 9, Paul said, I never learned to trust in myself, but I learned to trust in God. I want to tell you, it's the hard times in life, it's the trials in life that build and mold and shape. You might say, why, why can I take encouragement? You know, the Bible says, count it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you fall into various trials. You know, it's hard to count it as joy. What is it? It's not comfortable, it's not pleasant. What is there joy to it? I want to tell you, like Paul, Paul was molded and shaped. Paul, through the hard times, through the trials, through the burdens of life, he learned to trust in God. And you know, when we look further forward in Paul's life and his ministry, you know, we see Paul here in a ship with people in verse 20 said, and they're losing all hope. You know, in the same place where Paul was. But here's now Paul standing up, trusting in the word of God and encouraging the other ones to take from the word of God. You know, I want to tell you, it's through the hard times in life that we benefit. You see, it's not comfortable. It's not nice. Trials, burdens, persecution. But you know, through this time, when we feel like we cannot go on anymore, when we feel like giving up, you know, the Lord is molding and shaping and building character. You know, I want to tell you, and I want to encourage you in this, that the Lord is there with us. You know, the Lord has set out all that we need. He has given us the strength. He has given us the word of God. But we must be like Paul. We must hear the word of God. And we must believe in the word of God. We must trust in the word of God at the time of need. We must put our anchors in Christ. And we must pray until daylight comes. You know, this is a storm, a season in the past. But I want to tell you, you can come out the other side. A bit more molded. A bit more shaped. A bit more strengthened in your faith. If we just only... Hold on to the word of God. And you know, I'm going to finish on that. I'm going to finish on this. You know, maybe you're in a storm now. Maybe you're struggling. Maybe you're finding it hard. Pick up the word of God. Pick up the word of God. You know, when we read the word of God, when we learn about God and who God is and how God is sovereign and God is in control, you know, it gives us peace in our heart. It gives us peace to know that, you know, this is a big storm, but our God is bigger. You know, I hope this message encourages you. And you know, if you're in this place, like I said, draw from the Word of God. Trust in the Word of God. And be like Paul. Set your anchors in Christ and pray until daylight comes. God bless you. You know, I'm going to pray. I'm going to ask the Lord. You know, if you're listening to this message, I'm going to ask the Lord then. Encourage and strengthen. You know, you pray and ask the Lord to strengthen us as well. Father God, as I come before you, my God, 
Lord, I pray in us, my God. Lord, my God, for whoever, my God, may hear this word, my God. Lord, I pray and ask, my God, that you would use it, my God, at this time, my God, to strengthen, my God, to encourage, my God, Lord, to build up, my God. Lord, my God, that you would, Lord, reveal yourself, my God, through Scripture, my God. Lord, at this time, my God, in Jesus' almighty name, my God. Amen. God bless you.